Alright, so now we will solve this question. Um, so let's read the good question at first. An ordinary egg um, can be approximated at 6 cm diameter sphere. So we can assume the egg is in a spherical shape with 6 cm diameter. It is um, initially at uniform temperature of 6 degrees centigrade and it is dropped into the boiling water of 95 degrees centigrade. So the uniform temperature initially was 6 degree throughout the egg and it is placed or dropped into the boiling water at 95 degrees centigrade. So the convection heat transfer coefficient is given 1200 and we need to determine how long it will take to raise the, the center line temperature 70 degrees centigrade. So look here guys, initially it was 6 degree and we need the final temperature at the center of the egg is uh, 70 degrees centigrade. So how much time we actually need to reach that temperature? So if we start with this solution, um, let's see what sort of information we know. Uh, we know all of this and the unknown is the time. So we need to calculate the time. So why the assumptions is important? Um, for most of the engineering problem, we can't consider all the realistic aspects actually when we solve um, so we try to make it simple and we just use some assumptions okay so here um, we say this is a sphere so the first assumption is it is a spherical shape with this diameter and the other one is um, we will assume that there is the thermal symmetry so at this thermal symmetry at the midpoint of the egg Okay, that's the other um, assumptions. And we said um, all the thermal properties um, of the egg and the heat transfer coefficient, it is constant. You see, it is constant, it is given constant value. And we assume that the Fourier number is greater than, um, it is greater than 0 0.02. So if it is that, then we will be able to use the, you know, the one time approximation method. So now we will start with the solution. Okay, so um, at first, actually, if you see here, we need to um, we need to calculate the the time. So look, um, I just want to follow some different style to solve this question. So look, um, if I go from the backward directions, we need the time, all right? So this is the time t, and from the theories, you know, this time it is actually the function of Fourier number, you know, if you if you see the Fourier number or the definition of Fourier number, it is function of time. So that means if we actually want to get the you know the time, so if we know the Fourier number, if we can calculate the Fourier number, then we will get the time from there. So here actually Fourier number or the non-dimensional time, this is the same thing from the definition you know. So this is actually the non-dimensional time tau. So this non-dimensional time if we want to get this number tau, this tau value, then we need to use this expression. Okay, so we, did, we need to use this expression, um, and we need to calculate the values for tau. And here, if we actually need this tau, then there is the other value. You see the constant a1 and lambda 1. So we need this a1 and lambda 1. If we want to get the value of a1 and lambda 1 for, so now we are solving a spherical problem. So this is for a sphere. So then uh, we need to know the byte number, the corresponding byte number. So that means here we need to calculate the byte number at first. And before doing everything for every problem, we need the properties. We need to know, you know, the properties, all the properties that we actually need to solve the question. So now that means we will calculate the properties. Then we will calculate the byte number. We will check whether it is lump capacitance or not. Then we will calculate all these constant values. Then we will use this expression, this one term approximation method. Then we will calculate the Fourier number, and from the Fourier number, we will get the time. So that's the overall flowchart of this question. Now, if you see here, um, this is egg. Okay, so we know the table. We have the database for water, for air, for other fluid, but no database for egg. Isn't it? So there are a lot of tables 
lot of database that we usually use to calculate or extract the viscosity, density, or other you know properties. But there is no table or database for egg. So then how you will calculate the properties for egg? So let's see what is the materials. So if you consider eggs, 74% of water. Okay? So the water content of the egg is 74%. So that means the thermal conductivity and diffusivity. We can uh, consider, we can assume that okay, we can assume the water, the egg is as water. So that means we can use the water properties because no database is available for egg. So how we will calculate uh, the properties? You will, so already I believe you know because we solved some problem last two weeks. So you have some sort of understanding how to calculate the average temperature. So here initially the uniform temperature is 6. This is the final temperature. So we will make the average. So the average temperature it will be 38. At 38 degrees centigrade, um, this is the thermal conductivity. Okay, so this is table A9 from the book that we are following, the fifth edition SA unit. So if you go through this book, then you will get uh, the values for you know, the water. So the case, the thermal conductivity, it is 0 0.6 to 8. And we need the alpha. So what is alpha actually so this is the thermal diffusivity this is the thermal diffusivity and alpha is equal you know the k the thermal conductivity density and the specific heat so we will use all of those values from the table a9 and this is actually the alpha okay so we got the thermal conductivity and the thermal diffusivity and all of these values you will get it from table um, A9. So this is A. Um, you may ask me actually why we need um, this thermal diffusivity value. So we said actually to get the time uh, we need to calculate the Fourier number and Fourier number you know if you see the function of the Fourier number the, the all the equations for uh, you know the Fourier number so it is function of time and thermal diffusivity so that means if we actually want to calculate if you want to get the time t we actually need to know this alpha the thermal diffusivity all right so now um let's calculate the byte number at first so byte number you know it is the haze and here it is r naught the radius and k the thermal conductivity so we know the thermal conductivity um, we know the haze. You see here the heat transfer coefficient 1200 and it is 6 cm diameter. But look here, guys, I used it is 0 0.03. So if you see, this is uh, the diameter 6 cm. If you know if it is a sphere, this is the center. So the diameter means this whole distance. Okay, so this is 6 cm. And here this r naught it is actually you know the the radius so if we see okay this is the center so the radius it is equal diameter over two so it should be three centimeter and now convert it into meter so if you convert it into meter then it should be uh, 1200 into 0.03 this the, that's the you know the the R naught, the value we got the radius of this sphere. Uh, we actually need to calculate the temperature at the center. So yeah, now we got the byte number is 57. It's quite a big, quite you know, high number 57. We know the lamp capacitance method is applicable if the byte number is less than or equal 0.1, and it is much greater than that value so that means we can't use the lump capacitance method or the lump system so that means now we actually need to use the you know the one term approximation method and from the formula we know for one term approximation the formula is you see the 
non-dimensional um, temperature it is equal a1 e1 lambda 1 squared and tau so we know um, t naught we know t infinity we know ti everything is given we need to know a1 and lambda 1 so I told you earlier for a1 and lambda 1 we actually need to know the byte numbers so let's go to the slide um, actually you will get it from the from the lecture slide so you see this is the table table 4.2 from your book this one is for plane all this is for cylinder this is for sphere we got um, you see the byte number is increasing this is 450 and 100 uh, we got in this question the byte number is 57 so no specific uh, column for this 57 so what we need to do is we need to do some interpolation and I believe you all know how to do the interpolations so if we do the interpolations then we will get the value in between 3.07 to 3.01 and it is more or less 1.99 or something like that so here um, if you see we did the interpolations and we got lambda on equal 3.08 and a1 equal 1.9966 so that's the value for you know uh, lambda 1 and a1 okay and a1 so that means so far we did this we did this and now we need to uh, you know use this formula this under approximation method to calculate the non-dimensional time so now uh, let's do that now um, what is actually the t naught and what is the ti so this ti this is the initial temperature which is 6 degrees centigrade t naught this is the you know the end temperature what is the you know the final temperature 70 degrees centigrade and this is the surrounding temperature so that means the boiling water temperature i believe it is um a 95 degrees centigrade so that means t naught um you know 70 ti 6 this is 95 we know a1 lambda 1 so now if we use this expression then you will get this tau so let's see um, if we use this equation here you see this t naught equals 70 t infinity 95 we substitute all these values and then we got the you know the time tau tau is 0 0.2068 so our assumption was uh, the Fourier number is greater than 0.2 but what we found here is it is greater than 0.2 that means we got some error so that's the one term approximation is applicable with an error it's a small error so here you know this tau actually to, we know the Fourier number the function of Fourier number it is uh, Fourier number is tau r naught square over alpha. So previously, if you can remember, we calculated this uh, thermal diffusivity. Uh, we know the radius, and we know the tau. Just calculated it. So if we substitute all values here, then we will get this is the time. So that means we need this time um, to get 70 degrees centigrade at this center you see this is the 0 0.03 the radius so this is the sphere okay so the drawing is not good um if it is the center we we just consider this distance so this is the center this is the radius so to get the temperature 70 degrees centigrade here we actually need this time the second or you can convert it into minute so that's it so uh, let's um, have a quick uh, review what we did uh, we said to solve this problem we need time so if we can calculate the Fourier number then we will get the time so we know the Fourier number this is the function of the this non-dimensional time tau and uh, the radius or the distance over the thermal diffusivity and in this case, uh, this is the term approximation method. We know all of these values, but this two a1 and lambda it is unknown. So we calculated this value from the table. Before that, we calculated the byte number to check uh, whether the lamp capacitance is applicable or not. So just a quick thing, um, you need to follow the same thing. When you will solve any problem, you need to write the assumption. This is must. 
so it will carry some marks you need to write down the properties that's also must and then you will start with the analysis so here we calculated the byte number the properties the constant values then we use this uh, approximation method uh, we got the non-dimensional time and then we use the Fourier number definition and we got the time so that's it